Boom! Nope. Welcome back, everybody, to another Tuesday night chat with the muskrat, Mr. Creole Catfishing. And tonight, we're joined by Catfish with us. Yes. What's going on, everybody? How you doing? How are we doing? What do you guys think about that intro, huh? That was awesome. That was awesome. Some impressive that's Mr. Pitch. That's Mr. Kelly Bullock hooking us up mm -hmm. again this week, uh, getting us rocking and rolling. And uh, he's already he's already got the uh, spotlight loaded up and ready for us tonight. So, uh, first of all, welcome in, guys. Thanks for taking the time to jump on. And I know it was kind of short notice. We uh, was going back and forth on what we was going to do for a show tonight. And uh, so I appreciate you guys being flexible and say, hey, come on in. Well, yeah. Thank we'll, talk you. we'll talk fish. Don't you worry about it. It was short notice, but we had plenty of time to notify both our subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, I like it. Absolutely. Oh, we're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, hey, before we get started, we want to do our due diligence. We actually talked about this right before the show. We was talking about the fact that, you know, we always say hello and and, and what that comes down to. And and, uh, and it, it was it was said perfectly. It's like it's, it's like going into church. You know, what I mean, you just kind of right. shake hands and say hello to everybody. And and uh, you don't feel like you don't feel like you've done your job or sat down or, or time to sit down until you say hello. So. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're going to start out tonight by doing just that. Say hello to everybody. So I seen Mike Sampson in the house at five o'clock. I don't know. He was, wow. uh, he wanted to make sure he got his seat. Uh, so hopefully he's got his popcorn. He's good to go. Mm -hmm. So welcome in Sampy. Love you, brother. 922 crappy barbecues in the house fishing with mid South. What's up, big Mike. Uh, big wrench is in the house as well. What's going on? Uh Oh, mama's in the house. Mama jammer. Oh, That's Jackie is in the house. Well, she is watching from the hospital. So thoughts and prayers going out to her dad. Uh, her okay. dad is uh, not doing great and uh, asked her to take him to the hospital and get checked out. Absolutely. So uh, fingers crossed and prayers are needed. Uh, hopefully uh, uh, dad Jack there, he'll be all right. So, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'll try to keep things in line because she's coming home soon. So I got to behave. Right. Beckman 22. What's going on, buddy? Thanks for stopping in. Curtis Cunningham's in the house. Daniel Barry Sports Highlights. I got to slow down when I say that. I'll mess it all up. In the house. Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, Fish Owens in the house. Thank you for stopping in. Mr. Kelly Bullock is here as well. We got uh, Facebook land. We got Michael King tuning in and Ted Ellenbecker. Thank you guys both for uh, stopping in tonight. Appreciate you. Wabash Nate's in the house. Oh, boy. What is this? James... I know how I would pronounce it down here. Now I don't know I how y'all pronounce it, but that to me that's Derosh. That, what did you say? Uh, Derosh. That's how we say that down here. That might be Derosh. I don't know. He'll tell us in chat, but that's how we say that. James, we want to make sure we don't jack us up every time. Yeah. So if you don't mind kind of helping us out with the pronunciation of your last name, I don't want to murder it every week. But uh, appreciate you being here. I believe that's the first time I've seen you here. So welcome. Thank you, brother. Okay. Bobcats in the house. Catfish Bandit. I haven't, I haven't seen you guys in a while, man. Hope all is yeah. well. Harley cool. Neal's in the house. What's up, my brother? Wow. We got to get Harley. that guy on the show, too. That, that, that'd that be a fun show right there. Get my notepad uh, ready for that one. There we go. War Pig's in the house. What's up, War Pig? Thanks for, thanks for stopping in. Another channel member helping us out over here on uh, keeping the lights on at the studio. Mm -hmm. River Rats Catfishing Club. There we go. I think he double dipping on us. He got in on the Facebook and the YouTube, on the YouTube mm -hmm. side. We'll take both thumbs up, brother. I like it. <laughs> uh, there's Zach, my brother, River Warrior himself. We are actually got a big trip heading out next week. We are heading down to Alabama to do some pre-fishing for the Sea Arc Invitational Tournament. Ooh, so nice. I am, I am super pumped about that. Uh, Harold Bolton's in the house, another channel member. Thanks for stopping in, brother. Stonefly71. Local brother, uh, been passing back and forth some information on the river, uh, back and forth there. Paul Edmiston's in the house. What's up, buddy? Woo wee. Pontoon Jody's in the house. Jody, welcome. Thanks for stopping in. Mike Greenwell. Yeah, there we go. We got all three in the house now. Clearview Outdoors. River Warriors present and accounted for. That's it. Spent the uh, spent the eclipse out on Hoover trying to catch some fish. Uh, John Boy, what's going on? We'll, we'll touch base on the on the eclipse and and was it good yeah. for fishing or not? Because I've got mixed re, I've got mixed reviews. I've been mm. trying to keep up on what everybody was up to. The majority of people said it was a good day to fish, uh, mm. but I know Skip was out. They caught like eight fish before the eclipse and only caught one fish after the eclipse and shut it down after. Yeah, go figure. I, 
I, I don't know if that had anything to do with anything, to be completely honest, but. Uh, stand three. We've got stand three and then stand two. We've got both stands in the house. What's happening, guys? There we go. We've got Dale Hayslip in the house as well. What's up, Dale? Crappy Day Fish on. Missy Kennedy is in the house as well. We've got a Facebook user says, uh, Mystery Man in the house. There's Daryl Morse, Bob wow. Britt. These guys, everybody's double dipping. They, they I got double, they double dipping. I like it. I like it. There's John Smallwater Charters. Thanks for stopping in, buddy. Appreciate you. Let's see. Let's going see. through, making sure we don't miss anybody. Wabash Nate. I, can't remember if I got him first time around, but thank you. So you've got Daryl in the house on the YouTube side. I see Kelly saying Creole needs to show off those awesome jigs he got this weekend. I do actually. I'll I'll go get them here in just a minute. But yeah, don't, we'll uh, we'll don't be making we'll, me jealous. I'm heading to Alabama and I'm I'm wishing I had more uh skipjack like, rigs. That's that's exactly what, what these are for. i I'm I'm, I'm I'm gonna try them out Sunday. We go check it out. Mike Irvin's in the house. What's up, buddy? There you go, Eddie River Junkies. Thanks for stopping in. Getting getting down here. John Orler, what's happening? Hey, what's up, John? Mike Greenwell says honorary river warrior. I think I think he's earned I think he's earned his stripes, to be honest with you. I think so. I think so. He's, he does some hardcore fishing. Let's see right. who else. Captain Morgan right. in the house. That's Sue Woolley in the house with us. Mr. Terry Lane. Miss Terry Parker. Hooks and hammocks. What's happening? Jerry Parker, man, had a solid performance this weekend on the he Uno did. tournament. <laughs> ruining Kevin's bike. <laughs> as good as as good as what Jerry w- was out there, I know. I think he had a sixty-two pounder that hit mm-hmm. draw four, and it it still was no match for Channel Cats. It was not enough. It was not enough. And that is that is the story of the night tonight. I see Dad was in here earlier. There's Mama's in the house. We got Mom and Dad both tuning in. Thank you guys for for hopping over here and. We've got a big appointment coming up next week for mom, so she can use some extra Good. thoughts and prayers. Benoit Good. fishing. What's going on, ladies? Patriot James in the house. What's up, buddy? What's going on, James? Good seeing you, bro. Uh, yep, I actually got me a package in the way in the mail from uh, Benoit fishing. I got some of that uh, that carp bait, that prepackaged uh, carp bait, and we'll, we'll we'll be trying that this week too. We're gonna put it to the test. There you go. All right. I think we made it to the bottom. If we missed you, it was not intentional. Uh, we'll try to catch folks as they come in. We got 60 mm-hmm. people in the house already. We're only eight minutes into the show. So uh, yeah, thank rolling. you guys so much for, for stopping in. Now, for the star of the show, Catch Fish mm-hmm. with Us. Let's see if I can get uh, get the screen layout here a little bit. I'm, whoa, too much, Roger. There we go. That's better. <laughs> I'm ahead of you. Yeah, he's on it, man. I'm All on. right. Well, welcome in, guys. Hey, if you don't mind, kind of introduce uh, yourselves to the to the mm-hmm. group here, and uh, it kind of tell us a little bit about yourselves, where you're from, where you like fishing. Ladies first. Oh, Ladies first. first. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm B, and I <laughs> I hate being on camera. Hundred percent. Hundred. They they drug you along. I I understand. They did. They did. I just like to fish everywhere. I likes, don't care. Not biased. Everywhere. Likes to fish everywhere. Got it. Everywhere. Do you She's have the boss of the operation? Everywhere. I I was a bass and musky guy, and she got. She was like, when we first met, she's like, let's go fishing, and she's like, let's go catfishing. I was like, catfishing. That's what we do when the other fish aren't biting, and we want to drink some beer. And down along big old rabbit hole, and here we are. 14 years later, and that's about all we do. Catfish anymore. That's it. She says she's hardcore. <laughs> yes, she is. She's the boss. There you go. My name is Jeremy I'm from a small town called Moringa or Delaware, Ohio. Sorry, it's not that small, but been <laughs> just been fishing for my whole life, about 40 years. I got it. So, and uh, so you guys are from like central, about central Ohio, north? Yes. Kind of north central central high. Right smack dab in the middle of the state. Right smack dab in the middle. So uh so uh home waters for you guys is Hoover, Sandusky. You said Dillon earlier when we was talking. Allen Creek, uh, yeah, Sandusky Bay. Used to fish in the Skingham River a lot, but gotcha. that's uh gone downhill the last few years. So 
pretty much. We spent a lot of time on Hoover. I can tell you, you didn't miss much uh, Saturday night. You made a good call there. No, I, I kind of <laughs> knew we wouldn't. And this week, though, it, it's firing up. Yeah. Um, so of, see, yeah. seeing what I'm seeing of the last few days of fishing, uh, fish are being caught, but they're covered in mud, which it looks like they're all coming off. Uh, mm -hmm. They're getting active. They've been hunkered down. Uh, so I imagine they're they're going to have to get – they're hungry. So I imagine the bite's going to pick up pretty good, although – we have rain scheduled for the next three days. <laughs> yep. mm. And high Which, winds on Saturday, up to 20 miles an hour. And that lake, mm. as small as it is, it can get rough. Yeah. So, unfortunately, uh, you know, that is, a, that is a subject uh, when it comes to Hoover is, you know, we lost an angler about a month ago uh, up on Hoover due to rough water. And then about a year ago, we, we lost our brother, uh, Shane, up there mm. as well. And uh, so it's... People ask me, uh, I know Jackie asked me specifically, she says, what is it about Hoover that makes it so dangerous? Like, why, why, why is this happening on Hoover like two years in a row? And here's my opinion. It's not those no facts to back this up. But here's part of my I think the problem is it's a nine point nine lake. And I think that most people think because it's nine point nine, it can't be that bad. Right. It's just it's got to be. Mm. It's just a small lake. So. They take vessels out that aren't prepared on them big windy days. Nor, uh, Hoover is a straight north-south lake. If you get a north wind or a south wind, uh, south wind is a little bit worse just because it does run north-south. There's not a lot of flow, but there can be flow. And uh, Hoover gets rough. And it's. <laughs> I think people take it too lightly because they think it's a 9.9 .9 lake. They can just take you know their John boat out and they're going to be okay. Um you know, and then people make mistakes, you know, when you get panicked and bad things happen. Another thing, a lot of small boats, real small boats. Yeah. Yeah. The little plastic boat. You saw my boat over the weekend. It's a larger boat. Even with a nine, nine, five miles an hour, it puts off a large wake. I have to slow down for some of these other vessels because I feel like, hey, look, my weight could endanger them. I'm fully right. within my rights, but I have to I have to take their safety into consideration. Some of those small little plastic, I don't even know what you call them but they're only looking at like three or four inches of people mm -hmm. with two yep. guys in them. Yep. So there's, there's definitely a lot to, to be said about that. Um, and then also, you know, if you start taking on water and you're on a 9.9, .9, you can't take off and get on plane. Most of these boats, I can't get my boat. Don't go on plane. Uh, yeah, there you go. Please yep. wear life jackets. Things get bad faster than you react. Um, yeah. Anytime, anytime that water is rough up there. I know like, uh, Skip and and uh, Lloyd were up here fishing this week, and in the morning it was it was pretty choppy, and they had their life jackets on. I mean, they were on trolling motor mm -hmm. legally. They did not need. Oh. They gone. Oh, here we go. Got them back. Oh. Hang on. We got it. Skip over one second. Now we got it. I don't know what I happened. I thought it was on half Amish cell service out here for a second. Ah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, so they, you know, wearing your life jackets and, and putting your safety first is, is always good. Yep. Um, so what what are you guys' preferred methods of fishing it? Because obviously you're fishing mostly reservoirs. I'm going to go on a limb and say dragon is your go-to. <laughs> yep. 99% of the time dragon. Yes, sir. But like uh, the other night you said you were anchored up off the point of that island up there. Certain times of the year that works really well. The fish in Hoover move a lot. I mean, you mm. oh, yeah. have to chase those fish around. And so you have to become proficient at dragging most of the time. Um, like this weekend, if we do fish it, we're still debating on where we're going to go. But if we do fish it, we're probably just going to anchor up somewhere out of the wind. Not yeah, ideal, but that's what we'll have to do. Well, especially on Hoover, when you get, I mean, not Hoover, uh, Sandusky Bay, when you got a real good wind, and I didn't pay attention to the direction, but honestly, it doesn't seem to matter a lot. Because what happens is on the bay, people don't think that the bay has current, but it does. And it's driven by wind. So basically the wind off of the main lake pushes water into the bay and it only gets so full and then it goes back out. And it kind of hmm. does that that rhythm all day long. It, Almost, it like tide, What's that, well, Almost like it's a tide. What's that title? Almost like a tide. The first away. time you're pulling, pulling planer boards on the bay and you're like, why is that board going that way? And you realize, all right, you just went through a major current seam. And, hmm. yeah. We couldn't keep our boards straight the other night because of current. Yep. 
Yeah, I've actually used eight and 10 ounce sinkers up there. And people are like, are you kidding me? It's a lake. It's a bay. Like, why wouldn't the world? <laughs> seven that? feet deep. And, yeah. That's yeah. a good question right here. I like, I like saying three spot. Question. There you go. If you found a spot uh, that was more active in a lake, would you drag it or anchor up on that one spot? Uh, I go NASCAR circles around that one spot. Mm. That's basically what we did Saturday night. Most of those fish we caught came out of about a, I don't know, 100 yard by 100 yard square. Yep. And just, going back through it. and just keep going back through. Hmm. Okay. See, what, what I, especially up on Hoover, um, you know, sometimes it seems like you could drag one way through, you could mark a lot of fish and you can go one way through the fish. And you might pick up a couple. If you turn around and go back the other way, you might pick them all up. You know, yes, sir. there's, there's, there's some truth behind, uh, you know, dragging in opposite directions. So yeah. anytime I've come across, tried to come across fish uh, that I've marked and I didn't pick them up, I try to get the boat to turn around and go back through them the opposite direction. Then if you don't pick them up, you know, they just, they're not active, but uh, you know, 90%, even in the river, people think that the fish stack up in columns like this facing into the current, but they don't, unless it's not necessarily. Super current, it, they'll be turned every which way, you know, they, it, they're not necessarily completely direction oriented all the time. Um, but their, but their internal compass, if you put all your fish in a live well and then open the lid, every single fish is facing the same way. <laughs> it, and, and those of you guys that tournament fish or, or keep, even if you keep them fish to eat, uh, you put your fish in the box. When you open the box, every fish is facing the same direction. I don't know what it is, why they're facing that direction. I can't answer that, but they are. They're all laying the same way normally, unless you got some big fish. Now, I don't normally have so big a fish they can't turn around. So <laughs> that's, that's what I was thinking too. Sometimes they don't have a choice but to face one way. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> Jeremy puts fish in the box and they can't turn around. So they they're whatever way he put them in there. Yeah. But uh 60% of the time it works every time. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> tell us a little bit about, uh, so first of all, real quick guys, the, these guys are, you know, excited, uh, to start in their YouTube journey. They're brand new. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you guys are like right around what 30 subscribers or something like that. And, uh, yes. we've got their link down. In the thank you. What's that? <laughs> that was generous. Thank you. <laughs> 30. I, I think the other day when I looked, it was like, 27 or 28 or 20 somewhere so i figured you made it by 30 by now but uh but no they i've got their links down in the description you guys are going to see a lot of these guys especially uh heading yeah. into this um heading into this online fishing tournament league these guys have a plan and if you guys weren't convinced by saturday night that uh sandusky bay's channel cats can 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 compete uh with the top fisheries in the country uh, you were you were mistaken because the consistency that that place puts out is unreal. Uh, you're not going to catch a 60 pounder up there, but you might catch 120 pounders, right. you know, or 50 20 pounders. And for many of these tournaments, uh, those type of numbers and results are going to be extremely productive. Yeah. If you're dealing um, with numbers or a, like a total weight tournament. Yeah, you you can you can just absolutely just knock it out catching 15, 20 pounds at a time consistently right off the bat. It, it's it's killer in, in those type of situations. Absolutely. It's like Saturday night was slow compared to what it's about to turn into. Well, I know. Trust me, I know. I know <laughs> these guys before the show. Uh, you know, obviously we like to fish Sandusky Bay too, and some of the events mm -hmm. that are in the in the lineup. Sandusky Bay would be a good option. If it comes down to pure numbers, uh, Sandusky Bay is going to be a great option. Mm -hmm. And I told him the first thing tonight, I said, right now, uh, for Ohio, for what we got, these guys Thank are you, my Sean. biggest. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, Appreciate that. Absolutely. Drop the drop the link out there for you guys. Uh, yeah. Thank you, you. If you guys haven't set the hook on these guys, consider setting the hook. Um, I believe you guys are going to have a, a lot more content and a lot more fun yeah. stuff coming up. Uh, a lot of you guys' attitude um, during the live stream. That was your first live stream, right? Yes, yes. sir. First tournament yes. ever. <laughs> first tournament ever. First live stream wow. ever. And you nailed it. Uh, the So 
I wasn't able to watch a lot, obviously, because I was on the boat fishing, trying to keep up with you guys. It just wasn't happening. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but your screen presence was really good. Just talking to you guys before the show and now during the show, you know, you guys got a good upbeat personality that that I think is going to catch on pretty quick. Hey, Catfish and Chaos, what's up, buddy? We got all kinds of Ohio guys coming in. Yep, because th so things like this have happened in the past, if you remember, Roger. You know, small channel, first time live, first time tournament, win the tournament, and then YouTube channel does this. It's happened. Yep. It's yeah. happened to me, you know, five years ago, but it, hey, it happens. It's great for a YouTube channel to win your tournament first time out. Let me tell you. You got hooks and hammocks uh, saying, I set the hook on them. I'm going to need a guide when I make it up to the bay. Come on up, brother. Come there on up. We'll put you on the fish. I, I love, I can go weeks without reeling in a fish. To me, finding the fish, getting on them, putting everyone else on the fish, that's that's my joy right there. I'm ready, Liam. Yep. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us have that same attitude mentality that uh, nine times out of ten, if I got somebody, <laughs> Curtis Cunningham is dropping the O-H-I-O. -O. There you go, brother. <laughs> go Bucks. <laughs> Uh, I set the hook on my PB Blue Cat, 60 pounds this weekend. There you go, James. Congratulations, buddy. That is a big fish. I don't care where you are. That's a big fish. I still want to know who got his last name right. I, I still need to know that. It's bugging me. I, I didn't see it in chat yet. but uh, No. But well, I'm just going to keep calling him James because I'm not even attempting that last name. Come on, man. Uh, so uh, where what are you guys' you know, bait of choice – uh, do you have, you know, different techniques uh, for different times of the year or do you guys have a, a hardcore, uh, you know, regiment that you guys like to stick with? Normally it's shrimp at Lake Erie and this time of year, might as well not throw anything but shad. Nothing but shad yeah. this time of year. I got you. And Joe and I go up in, in the winter months and we go up and snag big gizzard chad like two three pound gizzard chad mm -hmm. yeah i have seen folks with those pictures we I've, I've never had nothing like that down here where i'm from but yeah that's amazing if you uh, want to go up in the winter some one weekend holler at us and we'll go up and we'll snag them it's a good time now okay i know who that is now okay sorry about that i didn't recognize your name I know who that is. That's right. I'm, I I met him. He is. Uh, he lives south of me. He was fishing on the bank with John and them. Based on his last name alone, I thought he knew you. Yep. <laughs> so that's, he's got to know. He's got to know Jeremy somehow. Right. Right. Uh, so so shrimp uh, for the most. I don't know what just happened. Shrimp for the most part, um, and shad during the cold winter months, which pretty much sounds pretty consistent with the, mm -hmm. even the. Even down here, like I'll use chicken, uh, even at uh, Hoover, you know, chicken works pretty good for me on the warmer months. Uh, but this time of year, I want shad and bluegill and whatever else I can get in, get a hold of. Now, for the blues on Hoover, we really like, I mean, the crappie fishermen hate this, but we, we like using crappie, our favorite. Uh, bluegill, uh, yeah. fresh caught, shad, bluegill, crappie. Yeah, I've yet to try a saw guy. It's kind of sacrilegious. Sacri they got people's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, uh, coming from the Ohio River, uh, saw guy works really well. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess they yeah. are kind of a deep water fish. So, hmm. yeah, Why they're not? they're naturally down at the bottom uh, where the catfish right. generally are. Hmm. Um, same with the drum and the carp and things like that. Uh, you know, interesting. So. It's a, it's a fish don't care if they're in the way they go down the gut. Yep. That is right. Um, and the natural, the fish that are in that environment naturally seem to be a better bait 99% of the time. Absolutely. Mr. John. Hey, there's Rusty Morefield. What's up, buddy? I was having issues seeing the chat. Good evening. Uh, it depends if, uh, so Jeremy and I <laughs> simulcast, uh, on both channels, right. um, most of the chat is generally on the muskrat channel, mm -hmm. but um, for folks that like put it up on their TV, just kind of kick back and, and don't chat much, you know, uh, head over to Jeremy's channel. It helps give him some watch hours. Um, and that's why we do it both ways. I, I didn't yeah. want, we don't want all the hours to hit uh, one channel or the other. So we, we simulcast. So if you jump on on Jeremy's channel, man, we're happy to jump over there and leave a thumbs up and, and you can try to comment. But I don't know how many people's over there. 
sometimes that's the issue when people are saying, I can't see so-and-so's chat. What are you talking about? Let's see. Uh, there is 45 on Muskrat Adventures and 27 in my channel. I can, I, I can see that. Shoot. That's, see, that's, see, all 27 of my crew, they're sitting in their recliners, probably with a frosty beverage, watching on TV. See, that, that that's what my crew does. <laughs> that's normally how I watch. I, I watch, and then, um, like today, I got in uh, your interview with Ray, and uh, the Brotherhood one you did, did a couple weeks ago. I got mm -hmm. those in in the car today when I travel for work. Uh, it's funny. Joe called me earlier, this short notice thing, and I was listening to your Brotherhood over brands at that time. And he's like, hey, uh, Roger called. Do you want to do a show? I said, that's funny. I'm listening to one right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was pretty flattered when you guys said that uh, that you that you've uh, been watching the show for a while. So, um, so give everybody kind of a rundown what what we can expect to see. What are your guys's like short term, long term goals with your channel? Obviously, you're brand new starting out. Um, so, what are some things that you guys want to do with your channel, or how do you see yourselves? You know, six months, a year from now. Take it. You want me to take it? Go ahead. All right, I'll take it. No, All right. The catch fish with us, the name that kind of came from, we want to share this with people. Mm -hmm. We want to bring people out with us on the boat who don't get the opportunity to. Love uh, it. People maybe never caught a fish. I, I want to get more people involved. Uh, lucky to be in the, in the position we are, we can share it with others. Right. And that that's what I want to share. And I want to make content for, I travel for work a lot. Mm -hmm. I sit in the hotel room watching YouTube videos. I want to make content for guys like me that they want to watch. I got a lot to learn. I got a lot to learn okay. on making content and putting together videos and all that. But yeah. um, we want to, hey, pull someone random off Facebook or off YouTube, whatever. Say, hey, come on out and catch fish with us. That's it. That was the thought yeah. behind it. Like we, it. We spent all, we talked about starting the channel last summer, start doing a little bit of recording. All winter, we kind of kicked around ideas, and that's what we came up with. They told me it. I couldn't fish if I wouldn't agree to be on the channel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, guys, there's a second boat I'm building out there for her so she doesn't have to be on video. Well, I can tell you that uh, Jackie is not a fan of attention. Uh, she does not mm -hmm. like to draw attention to herself. She does not want to be center of attention at all. And she did a show a couple of weeks ago by herself. Uh, I she that. did. That, she that was, did. She that was a lot of giggling. Yeah, I would fail. Well, she is uh, she is completely invested into the community. So today, mm -hmm. she sent me messages. She's like, "Hey, I messaged Chris Souders about Akuma Convector reels." I'm like, "What?" She's like, I, "And I sent I, I asked Jody about um, her Mad Cats reels. I was I was interested in on what she, how she felt about those reels, and mm -hmm. and I talked to so and so. I'm like, "Wait a minute." She is just taking off right now. She sent me uh, pictures for a new uh, catfishing for kids logo that we're designing for this year. And uh, she's, she's something else. She, she pulled the boat all the way to Hoover for me and I backed me in and backed me in. I was like, oh, you, awesome. you have created a monster is what you've done. And it's, it's hey. beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Well, the it thing is, is awesome it, to have that person by your side that, that is, is invested yes. in it. No, she might not like the video part, but, Oh, here's one for you. Last year, she watched a guy at the dock at Hoover mm -hmm. back his boat off, hits the button on his Altera, backs it out. And she, by the time I got back down to the ramp, she said, I need that. I was like, man. <laughs> so she, she surprised me this spring with it. So, yeah. And Ooh. to have someone that's that into it and wants the same thing, she's not like, how much did you spend? I, I don't ever have to. So, I wonder. I wonder if my wife is watching this show. She she, she could learn <laughs> from this experience. Just saying. Hey, Miranda, Miranda Lynn. Good luck at practice. I'll catch up with you soon. I love you. Um, but our ultimate goal is. I talked to you a little bit about it earlier. Is is be awesome to do this full time. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you guys was also talking about you know um, you know offering getting your captain's license and offering services to taking people mm -hmm. out. I think I'm creating a monster with the fun of catfishing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we went to the catfish conference and, you know, I need somebody to say like, yeah, come on, man, you really don't need that many rods. Do you, or you don't <laughs> need that. 
man, she was like, I picked up the, the, the skipjack rod and she's like, you better buy two. Cause if not, I'm taking yours. I'm like, what? And she's like, she's Ooh. like, yeah, I think I, we went over to river cats tackles. She was like, yeah, I, I definitely got to have a purple rod. Oh, you know what? Go <laughs> ahead and make it a pink rod too. And, and yeah. give me a pink and a purple reel to go along with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? And then she went over to FOA and came back with like five spools of line. She's like, look how beautiful these are. You know how good this line's going to look on my reels? I'm like, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> Chris had the best day ever of the tournament. Like nothing he did was not good luck. He went in a bait shop, won a Mad Cat's rod and reel. It, it ended up being a good day. Yeah, it was one of those I, days nothing could go wrong. But um, you just brought up FOA, Freddie. If you mm -hmm. haven't seen them, the new towels are out there for the week. Yeah. And they're awesome. Mm -hmm. I ordered mine. There you go. Yeah, I've seen you guys. I've seen you guys already got some merch out. Uh, I've seen some beanies or. Uh, uh, no, no, no. That's just for us. We're not we're not selling anything. We're, we're not. Oh, selling. OK. <laughs> I make yeah. everything. They're good. Now that we've said it out loud, they're going to have to now. No, no, everybody's going to be asking. Sales, brother. Yo, yo. And I can't make things all the time. Yeah, there's plenty of websites out there that make stuff for you, and we got oh, yeah. folks in the community. Yeah, you know, eventually we'll have to do it. Eventually, mm -hmm. yeah. If you if you continue to grow and 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 you yeah. know uh, spread your wings, especially if you go into the uh, the the charter business and stuff like that, you know, making mm -hmm. business cards and towels, somebody could take something home with them, physically touch it, taste it, smell it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just a towel, yeah. but they uh, already. See, somebody want one. I'm telling you, there you it's, go. It's, you're going to have enough of a while of people asking and you telling them no that you don't have it. It's going to just kind of force you to do it for a while. I'm telling you, Jackie, just Real you quick. guys just talk about taking people out fishing. She just sent me a message. Ask them if we can if they want to go fishing May fourth. So far, May fourth was the only day that we don't have plans for like. The next four months. Hmm. Today, she's like, I think May Fourth is the only date we have available to do anything. And she's like, Ask them if they want to fish May Fourth. I I have to look at the schedule, but I know we go to Michigan somewhere in May, but I, I think it's after that. Hmm. So yeah, yeah, we'll so talk about know. it afterwards. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah, she she runs the calendar. I don't. I have to ask her what am I doing next weekend? Can I make plans on this weekend or that weekend? She's like, No, you got a tournament. You got an online tournament, then you got an in-person tournament, and then you got an online tournament. <laughs> and a birthday and a wedding. and yes. Yeah. Well, this weekend, I thought I accidentally tried to sign up for a couple of tournaments, and she's like, hey, Skip, you're right. We got I can get you some towels. She said, hey, mm -hmm. we got Monster Jam tickets this Saturday. You're not doing tournaments. So I was like, oh, delete, delete. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, let's see. May the 4th be with you. There we go. That's right. That is May 4th, ain't it? That is. May the fourth how, be with you. Come on, Roger. <laughs> so tell, tell everybody what you guys are fishing out of. Like, what kind of gear you guys are mm -hmm. using? Uh, are you brand specific? To do you have any loyalty? Mm -hmm. Do you do you just use what you can get on? Um, we are using the Mad Cats rods. Mm -hmm. uh, fell in love with them. Ordered a couple. Fell in love with them. Stocked the whole boat with them. Um, reels are a hodgepodge. You know how that goes. You got oh, yeah. except for her. She had to have her. Revo, whatever it is. And, oh boy, you know, it's the, it's the real. No one else will have touch. Okay. But the I, got reels are, I got a bougie girl too. <laughs> mm. uh, they all have their flaws, right? He <laughs> loves using that reel. Yeah. It's just not allowed. Yeah, that's hers. Okay. Right, I got you. Actually, I've caught my biggest fish on the boat with her reel, but she wasn't on the wasn't on the boat that day. Ooh, I Rod <laughs> good friend will tell on you on on a live cast, right? Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. You, you gotta you, you gotta understand that uh, when you start doing stuff live, there's you can't take it back. You can't edit it out. Yeah. <laughs> it live is, is live. Uh, <laughs> and the, the the community has great memories. And if so, if you ever forget, everybody else will remember. Trust me. Oh, that's that's a fact. Uh, mm. What are you guys fishing out of? Uh, it's 1984 Starcraft. Um, it. It's, it's a, it was an Islander, which the Islander had the small cabin up front. Mm -hmm. And we did that for a few years. We'd spend the night on the river or whatever, just anchor up. Rods, it got to the point where we could lay in the cabin and be like, hey, that's your clicker. That's your clicker. And, uh, <laughs> wouldn't have to do 
any fag except for just lay there, enjoy the night. Well, as we got older and that cabin got smaller real quick, uh, put on a few pounds and uh, that is not true. As we became more obsessed with gear, <laughs> the cabin was taken up room. Yeah, true. That, so there we opened go. it up and uh it's a nice big stable platform for us. Always feel safe. Uh, it, it really works. Just 70 horsepower motor, I ain't going anywhere fast. Uh, yeah. nine kicker to and then the trolling motor, of course. So I'll get to that question there, Paul, here in just a minute. Uh yeah, I'm a big – everybody knows that I'm a big fan of the Deep B. Um, you know, my my boat is an old Sylvan. It's a 1983. It's it's pretty much the same as a StarCraft. I saw you guys' pictures and stuff of your boat. That's a Johnson 70? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Avenue, but, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Those those motors are like – first of all, <laughs> they're highly sought after. Um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of the – like the small racing boats – for whatever reason, that is the engine they all want because I don't know what they can do to that uh, three cylinder, mm -hmm. but uh, the the fuel mileage and the reliability of those seventy horse uh, Evinrude and Johnson motors is outstanding, crazy. My buddy's got one on his eighteen foot Sylvan. Man, he can run circles around me. Uh, I can go a little bit faster than him, but I'll run out of gas, <laughs> and he'll be <laughs> he'll still be gone. <laughs> yeah. It, very fuel efficient. The power to weight ratio is great. And for yeah. a two stroke, it's quiet. We can full throttle. We can have a conversation on the boat. So, yeah, uh, Ben Wall Fishing wants to know what trolling motor you guys are running. Uh, she got me that uh, Altera 24 volt this year. Oh, and, boy. Uh, Saturday night was the first time out with it. And I'm in love. We didn't have spot lock. I had a I had a trolling motor on the transom at Hoover the last couple of years, just oh, pushed no. us around. And, Oh yeah, now I can set I can set a route and just hold a course. It's like I was oh, playing man. with that. That's why I didn't catch any fish Saturday night. I was playing a trolling motor. <laughs> yeah, once once you learn how to lay a track and learn your uh I'm I'm sure you got drift socks already, but mm -hmm. um once you learn how to lay a track and use drift socks to keep you uh straight on a windy day, yeah, it's a game changer. Uh the and the Altera is good. We had trouble with uh, cold weather. Uh, I know Skip's in here at Clearview. Uh, we ran into a lot of issues with his and cold weather. I'm hearing that they've, they've upgraded everything and they've changed all that. People aren't having the same types of issues. I don't know that to be true or false, but uh, launching it and being able to kick it on stuff was great. I've seen the comment until you forget to turn it on. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Douglas has got a video out there somewhere where he had to go swimming. We have a closed valve. I have to use my dock hook to turn it on if I if I do forget. So there you go. Uh, Paul says he just bought a V haul. Heck yeah, man, that is awesome. Yeah, I, I like a deep V. Um, Jackie and I, she she thinks we're going to have a new boat uh, next year. Uh, a new to us boat. We can't afford a new boat, but uh, it's definitely going to be a, a V haul or a deep V. Um, there's lots to choose from and look at, but yeah, they're so dang expensive. The only problem is, is we have 30 people every week at Hoover telling it, asking us how big his boat is. <laughs> it's too big for it's too big for you. It's too big for you. No, I have a 22. I have a 22 footer. How big is yours? 17. It's only 17, but it looks big out there on the water. I admit it, but we get comments mine's, all the time. The boat's too big for. Mine's 22, and uh, the limit is 23. Yeah. So I don't know that because uh, my buddy Doc Lane got kicked off of Hoover. Uh, and a 24 foot sea arc. Mm. They only, check. Oh, I know. They, he only fished one hour of that tournament, and he's, I think, he either won or came in second place and only fished one hour. Oh, wow. That made it <laughs> worth it. <laughs> when it's really cold, spray silicone spray on the shaft on the Altera. Uh, yeah, the uh, Jim Buckeye catfishing, that's a great tip. And, and that also goes for the Tarovas. Um, if you get yep. those shafts uh, iced up in the cold weather, um, that silicone spray will do wonders, uh, keep that thing from freezing because we've had those issues, even, even with the Tarova, uh, manually putting it in and out, it'll freeze. Yeah. Can I had seen that that was the biggest issue with them locking up. So, um, I made sure I got the quick disconnect bracket and all that just because I don't, don't want to try and take the side plates off to lower it down. I was like, I'll just get that quick disconnect. And if I have to, 
that's what I'll do. But let's let's just hope that doesn't happen. We don't fish when it gets too cold. That's when it's time to saw guy fish. Hey, uh, Paul, to answer your question for a meet and greet for Southern Ohio, um, we are going to have one. Um, I've Ooh. I've talked to uh, Brandon. Um, I didn't. Uh, Brandon asked me to take it over this year. My uh, brain's just got so much going on with his health and stuff that uh, he couldn't even do it last year. And we don't want to miss another year in a row. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to head that up this year and get it going. I think we actually agreed on a date already, September, uh, end of September. Um, but once I get it figured out for sure. Um, but it's looking like I'm going to try to go uh, down on the river. You know me, I, I got to be on the river. So I don't know, sure. I don't know if it'd be a Rocky Fork. We're thinking about doing something down around Cincinnati area. Uh, so it's a little more centralized for like some tri-state. So we can get some Kentucky folks and some uh, Indiana folks and stuff over if they want to, if they want to join in for a meet and greet, but we are going to have a meet and greet this year. Um, I've just got to get the details worked out and then I'll start asking for, for help and volunteers to help make sure it's a good deal. It won't be as big as a gathering. I'm not even going to try to go there. <laughs> I'm not Daryl. I'll never be Daryl. I don't want to be Daryl. Daryl's 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 Daryl, and he's doing a fantastic job. Right. I'm just going to go to the gathering and have a good time. So there you go. Uh, but we will have a meet and greet here um, this year. So it'll be September. Um, the Ohio presence on YouTube catfishing is phenomenal. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? And we're it is, it is, it is absolutely insane. And, and uh, Ohio is not that good of a fishery. I mean, it just no. no. It's improving. What the state is doing here is improving in some ways. So, I mean, and that's great for all of us. Yeah, yeah. So, there's a lot of great programs out there. Uh, obviously, the the stocking programs that they're that they've launched over the last few years, Hoover being an exception, well, an exceptional uh, success story when it comes to the growth mm -hmm. rate. You guys know already know this, but yep. you know Hoover Hoover grows at an average of four to four point nine pounds a year. And the average growth rate on the river is about two. It's because Hoover's got more crappie than any other body of water I've ever been on. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We just had this conversation the other day. Uh, I want to fish crappie so bad at Hoover. And I keep telling myself, I'm going to come to Hoover and just crappie fish. But when I get up there and there's, there's 50 pound blues and 70 pound flatheads that you can catch. Uh, I just have a hard time chasing the crappie. It's hard. Yeah. It is hard. We're yeah. wanting to learn the Ohio River this year, also. So, yeah. Well, I'd be more than happy. You guys come down. We'll, I'd be more than happy to take you guys out and show you whatever I know. It shouldn't take long. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> uh, what uh, type of electronics do you guys run on the boat? Uh, I have a Lowrance, uh nine inch. Uh, I don't even triple hook something to that that I won last year on a Facebook thing. Other you than got that, a, I would... a hook triple shot. That's what you've got. Yeah, that's what I'm, that was. <laughs> then I've got like a 10 or 12 year old uh, Helix 5. Okay. One of the first side imaging. And uh, I ran that until last year. Now I just run that for a map and uh, the nine inch for my side scans. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. Yeah. Jeremy would, be able to, Jeremy would be able to help you out a lot with your Lowrance electronics. I've never, actually, I do have a Lowrance. I have a Lowrance TI 7. I think it's a 7 or a 9. I think mm -hmm. it's a seven. It came with a boat when I bought it a few years ago, but uh, it does great. It's just too small. Um, mm. I'm a I'm a snob. I, well, I have a nine inch. I have nine inch screens, Garmin's. So right. Uh, Benoit said they are. Jackie says she's excited for Benoit for their upgrade. I don't know if they're talking about their boat or if they got electronics. They're upgrading. Uh, I think uh, everything is getting upgraded. The boat and everything with it. There you go. Big, yeah. big upgrades. We were watching them uh, slay some channel cats the other night. Well, they were one. Of the, so we talked a little bit about the eclipse and the effect it had different areas, different channels, different things I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. They said that the, the bite was on fire until the eclipse. And after that, not so much. And that's exactly what Skip experienced. The, the bite yeah. was good. It wasn't on fire, but the bite was good until the uh, until the total eclipse and then nothing, hardly. Um, yeah, and so I was watching Skip's live stream from my back deck here, knowing I'm only 10 minutes away. It's like I could be there, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, Jim. He says, I'm old, I have a 12 inch screen. Yeah. Uh, we, we, uh, Jackie and I have been looking at 12s, 
the Garmin G series, uh, the GS, uh, like 8600 series that uh, Ray Ferguson was talking about last week. Yeah. 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 It popped up, you know, Facebook heard us talking about it, I guess, but it popped up today uh, as an ad. Do you have any idea how that they have a 22 inch screen? Yes, I heard that. Yeah. Do you know how much it is? Thirteen thousand. Uh, I remember you said on the interview. Yeah, that's crazy. Thirteen thousand dollars for a unit. But you got to look what he's doing with it, though. He's using the tool that's given with that oh. live scope, and I mean that's yep. just crazy What's setup. Up? What's up, Brandon? Um, Never, Brandon. Well, he's actually using. I think he says he has twelve-inch monitors, but he bought a twenty-two-inch monitor. It's not even, it's not a fish finder, but it's a, a monitor of some sort that does hook to Garmin and you still be yeah. controlled and used. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's a, it's a standalone monitor that interfaces with all of his Garmin stuff. And he said it was touch screen also with his yeah. Garmin. Yeah. 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 For that reason, I saw the 22, that's, it was, I believe it was $14,000 or $13,000 for the 22 inch screen, or you can get the 12 inch for like, Four thousand or five thousand, and get a, a monitor for like two thousand. So it's about half price, and you get the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh oh, Bob. I don't know who Bobcat's talking to. Uh, Bobcat says, "Team, my bad dude is going to whip up on you this weekend, big boy." <laughs> well, hey, we can't win them all. We can just win the first one and go from there, right? <laughs> Oh, they, it's him and James are going back and forth as usual. There you go. Brandon says the 22 inch NBG battleship screen is four grand. That's just the screen. That's nothing, nothing else. Ooh. Uh, mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that ever happening. I've, I've already been trying to figure out how to hook my tablet up into it and just. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. My laptop, maybe something with a bigger screen. Yeah. Like go buy one of those like hundred fifty dollar uh, TVs at Walmart. Try to hook that yeah. up. Um, you know. Someone did that on the front of the bass boat. Had to, had to like thirty two inch on the front of the bass boat. Right, that's what I need. Yeah, trying to get the boat upgrade. Wait, wait, wait. Where you go? Trying to get the boat upgrade. You got it. Just going to get her on the water. Then working on upgrades as we go there through the go. year. I might have a couple things to help you guys get started. I offered you my net. But you didn't want it. I'm going to offer it to you again. <laughs> and uh, I might have another. I might have another graph. That delete TI seven. I haven't figured. I think about putting it on the back of the boat for when I'm bumping or suspend drifting. Yeah, but I don't know. I ain't figured out what I'm doing with it yet. But uh, just buy a big mag magnifying glass and set in the front of the unit. There you go, Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> That's the budget. Google those glasses with the big Google AIs and see it. Oh, yeah. And that, that's something we all mount our electronics up to the front like bass fishermen. And then we stare out the back of the boat, not looking at them. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, actually, Clearview, he's, he's got a live scope unit now. And uh, he did a really cool um, His is completely universal and portable. He can actually take it out of his boat and go put it in my boat if he wants to. Well, you can put hey, it what's in my up, boat JG? Too. <laughs> JG, he put it in your boat, too. Yes, there you sir. go. Uh, he's got its own, you know, it's in a milk crate. It has his own power pack. He's got his uh, kill switch for his uh, power. He's got all of his cables, transducer, and everything mounted on a pole. He's got it all hooked up to where he hmm. can set it in front of his boat. He can set it in the back of his boat. He can take it off and put it on my boat and just leave it. Just whatever he wants I, to do. Yeah, he's, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Can you, imagine, <laughs> can you imagine facing a live scope backwards and then bumping and actually watching your bumping rig on live scope? I'm just saying it's it would work. Throw it out there, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, I'll never be able to do it. But. 922, uh, yeah, that's that's one of the things I saw, but I haven't figured out how to do it or if it if mine's compatible. But uh there is videos mm -hmm. out there that shows how to Wi-Fi link your graph to your phone or a tablet or HDMI TV, anything that has Wi-Fi Wi-Fi capabilities. Uh, so yeah. that's it's out there, just the same as like your T your sure. your. See, you know, he was thinking it too. I ain't the only one. So now we used to do something similar to that, like on the Muskingum River, we would anchor up and had the. It was called a deeper. It was a little ball that you throw out, a little yep. sonar ball, yeah. right to the screen to get your baits out. You float that back over your baits, and you have an idea 
of what's back there. Mm. The technology was better at the time. That could have been awesome. It just wasn't clear enough to. It was, That's interesting. Yeah, huh. so it networked rather well. Hmm. Yeah, it it adds up fast. Uh, you know, Zach Zach just picked up the Humminbird version of the whatever they call it, the Mega Live. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, by the time you start buying cables and just the poles to mount these things is is crazy expensive. The mount itself, then the pole itself, and that this is everything just the initial the initial shock of buying the thing is is bad enough. Yeah. Roger, it's not that we didn't want it. I know Benoit, I was just playing with you. I know you you were trying to be nice. You're like, no, don't don't give away your other net. You might need it someday. Which I thought they I thought the thieves stole it when they came in the garage, but somehow they left the uh Hydro Web 80 just laying there. <laughs> they don't they don't know how much it costs. That's what it didn't take. Oh yeah. Well, trust me, they got their money's worth. They got they got they got plenty. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, you need a memory card for active captain. Uh, it looks like we're talking mm -hmm. uh, graphs up there. Yeah. Um, which we're going to, you know, make your own pole mount. So yeah, Skip did make his own pole mount. Um, he did, he went the PVC route and we found out that the, that PVC does not hold up very well. Uh, it flexes as soon as you start, put, you know, giving it a little bit of juice, uh, it flexes and it kind of, you know, messes your imagery up just a little bit. I have a 10 inch helix on the back for drifting. 12 inch Lawrence live on the dash and a nine inch Garmin on the front with live scope. Man, Buckeye's got it all covered out. He see, that's what I like. Uh, because each of those is really good at something different. So Garmin has the best live scope. Live imaging right now, Garmin still stands out in front. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone else is catching up pretty fast, and I'm sure somebody will overtake that that title eventually. But right now, Garmin still holds the best. In my opinion, Humminbird still has the best side imaging, but um, Lawrence has the best, I think, 2D and down imaging, especially with that overlay. Yes, um, I love that on mine. I like the overlay. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, so uh, Jim's, Jim's like, hey, I ain't no brand snob. I'll run them all, <laughs> <laughs> which I do too. I got a Humminbird on the front of my boat. I got a, a Helix 7, I think, on my graph mm -hmm. or for my, on my trans, my, a trolling motor. And I got two Garmin's at the at the helm. Hey, there's Paula Smith. I just up, seen Paul? your. I just seen that they you made the news again. I didn't get to read the article yet, but uh, I'll be sure to go back and check that out. Thanks, Paula, for stopping in. Love you, girl. Um, I forgot. I had a good question for you guys here just a second ago, and I got sidetracked. Well, so much stuff. Well, while, while you think of your question, I actually have a question. A little. little straying from the subject just a little bit and this is really for all three of y'all if you know y'all been doing youtube for a little while now now that y'all have got going on youtube and really starting to see how everything works everything's growing is there anything that's let's say surprising now about youtube that maybe y'all didn't expect or maybe some assumptions that y'all made about youtube that come to find out or not or are wrong you know anything that that surprised y'all since y'all started well, we're, we're still fairly new, and like we said earlier, we don't have many subscribers yet, but we've already got one hater in the 28 subscribers. <laughs> one hater? Well, I tell you right now, if you get hung up on one hater, you're in the wrong business. Cause right. Not even worry yeah. about it. <laughs> got a new member. Brooklyn, appreciate it. Brooklyn, I, I'm not, I don't even remember we're seeing We're still fairly new, so no giant surprises yet. I realized um, it's as uncomfortable as I thought it would be. It's every bit <laughs> as uncomfortable as you thought it would be. That's okay. Uh, I don't know if it works in the um, like live camera stuff, but like, you know, in school, they tell you just imagine everybody in their underwear or whatever. So I don't know if that'll work for you. <laughs> no, you, no, I don't think it's the you don't same want thing. To, you don't want to imagine any of us in our underwear. No, 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 no we're, not, we're not going there. Time to go. <laughs> Here's what I'll tell you. Um, and this is just my two cents for somebody new coming into YouTube and wanting to do the live things is um, focus on your audio. Um, yep. Audio is, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, is uh, probably more important than yes. your video. A video quality is important. Don't get me wrong. People want to see what's going on. But audio will turn people off in a way pretty quick. So having uh, noise canceling um, devices, whether it's the you know, the, the, the dead cat muff, or even if you go as simple as like right here is my box that goes on the boat. 
And even if you go as simple as a hair curler with a hole poked out for your cord, mm -hmm. that works. That works and great too. That will that will save you from losing viewers, uh, especially if you're yep. live fishing. Um, yep. I don't see my, oh, it's on the camera. It's on the mount that's on my ring light. Mm -hmm. But focus your, your energy on and your money into uh, like sound quality. Uh, GoPros and stuff, you can get action cameras. There's a million of them out there. And anymore, they're all good. You don't mm -hmm. have to have a $400 GoPro to, to, right. to make a video and do something out there. Um, <laughs> they're, they're good. Got four GoPros. Well, that, wow. that's fine. So I'm, yeah. I'm preaching to the choir at this point. But uh, uh, I know I know one one big thing that helped me, especially when I was starting, because I was insanely camera shy. And, and I still am a little bit, believe it or not. The chat's going to tell me I'm full of it, but still hmm. still get that way sometimes. But for me, it helped a lot when I was first starting. You know, a couple of subscribers I had, especially with live streams. When, once I got to know my audience personally just a little bit, it started being like I was hanging out with them, you know, and getting getting to know my audience helped out a lot. It helped out to cut cut out a lot of those nerves because now I'm not live in front of a bunch of strangers anymore. These are people that I know personally, people, you know, th that helped me a ton when I was new. Now, it took me, what, Roger, probably about a year before I did my first live stream. It, it took me a while. To, to, yeah. to get the nerve up to finally do it just live on my own, not in a tournament. But that's the big thing that helped me right there is get, getting to know people, getting to know my audience. It calmed those nerves a lot. I will say that. Thank you. So so uh, Brooklyn came in earlier and I said I hadn't I didn't remember saying uh, the name before. And uh, obviously it's a fan of Joe's. So we all love you, Joe, says Brooklyn. Hmm. My daughter. There you go. Ah, okay. There we go. See, I, I absolutely love that. If you guys, you know, yeah. you guys know that my mom and dad watch. My sister was in here earlier. My brother mm -hmm. pops in all the time. Um, my kids will, will pop in randomly. They're too busy for old dad anymore. But uh, I love that the family is they working together. Arguing with me about it. Creel ain't camera shy. It's just him trying to keep certain words from coming out. Yeah, that yeah, too. So that too. Yeah, so keep keeping uh, keeping the shows PG or PG thirteen uh, mm -hmm. can be depends on who your audience is or who you're. Yeah, yeah, I. It's tough. I used to have a pretty bad potty mouth too back in the day. I've got it. I've got it pretty much under control now. Uh, well, on camera, and uh, right. but uh, every now and then something will roll out that shouldn't. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I bring a fisherman's mouth. What's that? I said it's hard to break a fisherman's mouth. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's the same as it a is. sailor, right? We're we're basically yeah. we just yes, making orders on smaller vessels. That's it. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think it's worse for fishermen. I really, I really think so. Hey, Jerry Parker just dropped the link out there to to yeah. set the hook on these guys. Thank you, Jerry. We got seventy nine folks. You, I think somebody just posted that you guys were up to thirty six subscribers so far tonight, guys. If you don't, uh, awesome. we thank you all. We do. That's awesome. Guys, give these guys, uh, give them guys a chance. Go over and set the hook on them and uh, ring the ring the bell. Don't forget to leave a comment. Do you guys have any videos? Yeah, you guys got videos, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nothing fancy. It's yeah. just the fish. That's it. Nothing fancy yet. Yep. There we go. So, up, and, to, up to forty three now. There you go. Forty three. Thank you. So, rolling. If, if I tell you that anyone in here that has a channel that has any content will tell you, me, Jeremy, every one of us, our first videos. Our first 10, 20, 30, show oh, up yeah. to 300. And I still don't know if I got a good video. Uh, your yeah. first videos are always going to be, you, you aren't going to be your greatest work. Uh, right. Unless you, unless you're like uh, Keith and fishing and stuff. And you just go back and delete all the bad ones and only leave the good, <laughs> good ones. Right. Yeah. Which isn't a bad <laughs> trick. Um, but, you, you know, your first videos are always going to be, you know, less than perfect. Yeah. Uh, but, but these guys do have some content out on their channel. Uh, you know, consider going over and, and setting the hook on them. I have a feeling uh, coming into this live fishing tournament league uh, that you're going to see a lot out of this group right here. And uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, Creole says he's shy. He's full of crap. I have messages that say otherwise. There you go, Jerry. 
But see, <laughs> this is the other side of that coin of getting to know your audience personally. That's what you end up dealing with. Just, just I love you, Gary. <laughs> hey, Randy, man, that's 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 the whole that's the whole concept behind this channel is yeah, to try to help exactly. folks out, uh, whether it's you know a newbie to, to fishing or newbie to, to YouTube and live streaming or things like that. Um, one of the things that Jeremy and I try to try to repeat over and over again is neither one of us know it all. Uh, yeah. Most of the, most of the information that we pass along is just regurgitated information that we got from somebody else or some of our own personal experiences. Uh, we hope to never try to come off that. We, we know it all in our ways. The only way I'm wrong a lot, uh, trial and error, <laughs> Uh, trial and error is, is just how I run. Um, but I'm very fortunate. Uh, Jackie and I talked about this today. We was talking about people we would love to fish with. And I was like, man, I've, I've fished with Doc Lang. I fished with Chris Souders. I fished mm -hmm. with some of the, you know, some of the greatest teachers in the sport. And yeah. I can call any of them up right now and, and, and talk to them. And they've passed on so much valuable information that I just repeat it. Um, yeah. And I try to give uh, credit where it's due. You know, these guys mm -hmm. have taught, taught me so much. Um, but that's why this channel exists, is to try to help yeah. folks out and <clears throat> educate, education and conservation. That's what we, right. that's what we really, truly care about. So having it fun is what it's all about. There you go. Yeah. And, and JG Hill reminds us it's all about having fun. Uh, yeah. If you're not having fun, Absolutely. and you guys will see this. Uh, so I, I'll be honest. When I first started, I, I did the live streaming stuff, and then I tried to do production videos. I was doing production videos off my phone. Um, I continued to do videos and videos, and I thought, you know what? If I get a laptop, I bet I could do even better videos. I got a laptop. I think I've made one or two videos since I got a laptop. Everything you see on my channel was done with a phone. <laughs> uh, uh, most of it was recorded with a GoPro or an action camera or the phone itself. Yep. And everything was edited and put together, which – my editing and cuts and stuff aren't the greatest out there. I'm not going to lie and say that I have fantastic stuff, but I did it all on the phone. And then when I got to the computer, I just learned everything over again. And I got so frustrated mm -hmm. sitting here watching videos on how to make videos for so long. I was like, I just want to fish. <laughs> so yeah. All these hours I'm sitting at the computer. I just want to catch fish. Like, you know what? I can just go live. <laughs> so, you know, just, just keep in mind, you want to keep it where it's fun. Uh, some people love yeah. editing. You know, you hear Keith fishing and stuff, talk about how much he loves editing and mm -hmm. he loves the process and, and the, the final, the final cut, you know, and be proud of it and stuff like that. Bob Gass says editing sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, I'm the same way. I'm, I don't like editing. There's better things I can do with my time and I'm not that good at it, but my brother who's doing all of our editing for the channel now, absolutely loves it he has picked yeah. up this ball and just ran with it and it makes me so mad because the first time he ever edited for me using that program he put something out that was just a hundred times better than anything i ever did it's like <laughs> well some yes. folks are just really really good at it yeah uh jerry, yeah. jerry leaves a great comment here it says don't be afraid to ask any of us questions we will all right. happily answer them and that absolutely. is that is that is uh that is one thing that uh, this catfish community, uh, I can, I'm super proud of is the fact that, um, open arms, um, right. You know, just, just from, you know, I, I hate to keep bringing up Jackie over and over again, but she's new to this. And mm -hmm. many times she's like, I can't believe how like super laid back and cool and helpful and open for information people are. She's just not used to it. And she's like, it's right. just weird. It's good. But she's like, it's just weird. That and the drama. She's like, I can't believe for a bunch of fishermen, there's this much drama. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, well, well, I don't, I try not to get caught up in the drama. There's enough. If you want drama, you can find it, but I oh, don't have any use yeah. for it. There's uh, plenty. I try to stay, steer clear of it um, yep. the best I can. Uh, you're, you'll get caught up in it eventually. Uh, oh, just yeah. take, just take the high road and, 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 nope. and it all, let it all roll off your back. If, if you yeah. always do what's right to you, then you'll be fine. Yeah. You know, yes, don't, don't let anybody tell you that you're, that you're, you know, don't be influenced by anybody else. Your morals, your standards, you stick to them no matter what for, for better or worse. Cause look, I've, I've had to stick to mine for the worse. Like, look, this is where <laughs> I'm at on it. 
I don't care who gets mad, but this is where I'm at. And that's it. It's if yep. anything else, everybody knows I'm pretty consistent. Like this is this is where I'm at. If you don't like it, eh, you know, so be it. <laughs> Draw that line in the sand and don't cross that's it. it. Exactly. That's it. That's it. No, this community has been great. Um, just coming into it. Uh, I got I'd watched some of the lives, a lot of the videos here and there. And the night that they did the Kevin, Brian, Chad, all of them were doing the video about the tournament league. Yeah, they were yeah. live, and I was watching. I was like, "These guys seem like a good group of guys." Because we had been talking about doing tournaments, yeah, local tournaments, whatever. And we went to a seminar. Joe and I went to a seminar this winter, and mm -hmm. guys were were like encouraging, "Hey, go try it. You've never done it. You've never done." It. To be honest, a lot of the local tournament guys are they fish like their kids aren't going to eat unless they win. And that's discouraging. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and now there are some good ones, but it's that one bad apple ruined ruin the whole bunch. And I was watching the video. I was like, this is pretty cool. And Brian talks about the Uno tournament. I was like, what a cool concept. They went on uh, the veterans, uh, horseshoes on. I was like, you know what? This is more fun than anything. It, it's yeah. not competitive. There's not enough money in it to, to make anyone be like, hey, this is all right. Uh, I, I have to fish like crazy. It's not like you're winning something. And I kept looking, all right, what's a catch? What's this going to cost me to get into? And I was like, yeah. nothing. All right, let's do it. Absolutely. That's actually the reason we're going to miss one of our tournaments this year. We're uh, Take a, we're taking a veteran out for a veterans tournament on Sandusky Bay. Oh, cool. Is that on uh, June, June 2nd or 3rd or whatever? Yes. Uh, yeah, first. Disabled I think veterans, June 3rd. Disabled veterans yeah. outdoors? Yeah, you going up? I've been there every year. Okay, good, good, good. I'll be, I will be there. We're missing, we're missing a couple of tournaments that day as well. Uh, actually, Chad's bumping for Biggins. I don't know why he waited to freaking June to do a bump a tournament. Because he wanted to make sure. Because he wanted to make sure I was in the spawn. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when all hey, the fish you, turn off, you get to go bump. Mm -hmm. hey, well, let me let me tell you something. Uh, last year, I don't remember what the date was last year, but Skip, I mean not Skip, well, actually Skip. Zach and I all fished against each other in the same boat. Mm -hmm. I, don't how, I don't know how this happened, but I bump. I like to bump farther out. I like to get my bait farther from the boat. So I was bumping out farther. Skip was bumping in the middle, and Zach was bumping close to the boat. That's kind of he kind of runs the graphs and the marauder. So he mm -hmm. he keeps his fairly close. I caught fish, and Zach caught fish, and Skip didn't catch any. <laughs> he was middle. He was doing absolutely nothing different. He was using the wow. same bait, the same. He was doing everything the same as we were. Zach got first place and bumping for Biggins, and I got second place bumping for Biggins on the Ohio River. So you were getting the breakfast fish. He was getting the dinner fish. The lunchtime fish just weren't eating. It wouldn't happen. Poor Skip. I we I think at one point we even put the bait on the hook for him. I was like, man, do you got something on your fingers? What in the world have you done? <laughs> but. I don't, I don't know that he's in here, but I don't know if he even caught a fish that day. And it was, it was just mind blowing. But uh, anyway, uh, real quick, Sue has a question here about the live tournament. Do you have to have a YouTube channel? You do not. The only yeah, thing you, you have to have, to have is a YouTube phone account. Account. You have to YouTube account. You got to have, you know, a, a username. Not necessarily a full channel with content and everything, but you do have to have a YouTube account, right? Yeah, I guess it, as, as if you have a Google account, you already have one. Right, 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 right. Uh, yeah. a G, well, hey, a, a Gmail account and just sign up for YouTube. That makes you a YouTube account. Like, whatever you need to join a chat in YouTube and chat, that's all you need to be in these live tournaments. That's all you need. In the Mad Cat scale. And, well, well for, for the tournament league, yes. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, there was a lot of great comments up there, especially when we was talking about the drama. I seen something about as the, I've always called it as the reels turn. <laughs> yeah. The young and the catfish list. <laughs> that was one. And I heard uh, as, as the slicker turns, that was Bobcat. As the slicker turns, that was the other one. Yeah. yeah as long as you can log into StreamYard, you're good to go. But see, I just okay. don't remember what, what you have to have to log into StreamYard. That's where I was hanging up. Okay. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. Hey, there's Terry Lane. What's up, Terry? Thanks for dropping in, buddy. Kentucky Hunter. Man, we got some folks. 
We got some folks yep. uh, moving to the park. Saying, just, just click the link they send. You don't need account. Hmm. That's what okay. I thought. I thought uh, We're learning. Uh, oh, looky there. Uptown Chrissy Brown, man. Tuning in late. Channel member for 18 months. Thank you, Chrissy. I appreciate right. you guys' support more than you know. Appreciate that. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, let's see. I know we missed a whole bunch of comments right there. I was trying to catch back up. Um, yeah, I don't know. We was trying to give advice on the on the on the tournament stuff and the channel stuff. And the biggest thing I'd say is just be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Uh, even though you know somebody's super success, like no matter how hard I try, I'm not going to be uh, Richard Gene, the fishing machine. All right, right. I just can't. I'm, there's only one of those guys, and I love him to death. I love watching that channel. But no, we're just going to do what we always do. We're just going to have a camera yep. on it doing it. That's there it. you go. Um, yep, I, I've, I've said so many times that you know there's an audience for everybody. You just have yes. to find your audience. You know, do what you do, and you're. Your passion will come through. If you're trying to fake anything or trying to exaggerate, or it, it'll, it'll come out on camera. The camera will show it 10 times more. Do what you like to do. Your audience will find you. And through your analytics, you'll see what works and what don't, how to shift things around, and just go with it. There you go. Have you all considered using measuring board to measure inches instead of pounds like the kayakers do? Uh, so for the online fishing tournament league, um, I don't believe I don't believe any of those are length. There's all weight, but there are several tournaments out there that are. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, there's a whole uh, here in Ohio there that has launched a whole uh, length division, um, and that's awesome for the fish. Yes, yeah, I like the fact that you can measure it and put it right back into yep. the water quickly, um, yep. which is also one of the huge benefits to the live fishing. Mm -hmm. You bring it out of the water, you weigh it right then, you show it, and it goes right back into the water. You know, yep. not riding in a live well for 50 miles one mm -hmm. way. You know, that happens at some of these big tournaments. But um, uh, fishing can. Yes. Yeah, we don't even right have there. a live well in the boat just because, I mean, I, it was never my thing to ever get a live well full of fish and take them anywhere. Yeah. Well, if you if you decide to do the the tournaments, especially like up on Hoover, there's you know a group of guys up there that do it. But I've got a live well for mine because I've I wanted to try to fit. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the Fishing Chaos app uh, they do have an online uh, length division right there. You guys, if you're interested in that, that's that's where you would want to go check out. And you'd be up against you know guys like uh, I kayak Mike uh, runs that run that circuit. Ryan Bortz. Uh, Justin Johnson, you know, some, there's some there's some big dudes that really uh, really do well in that length division. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Richard Jean's still around, watch him all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, Richard, he's he's a hoot man. He makes good content. It all depends on what your niche is. You know, if your right. niche is is entertainment, if your niche is education, if you're able to pull off both, um, you know, you just. Find you find your groove and and that's yep. find out works for you. Um, let's see what else. Uh, let's see, we got a we do have a spotlight tonight. We can't forget about that. Oh, we do. That's right. We'll we'll play that right at the end of the show, like we always yep. do. Yeah, we'll close out with that. Uh, mm -hmm. I like, uh, that's been working out pretty good here lately. Um, guys, do you have any questions or anything? I just realized it's it, we're at nine fifteen already. Yeah, we're we've been rolling. No, I, we appreciate you taking time for us. And I mean, this is awesome. The community has been great. Welcome arms. I, I actually just enjoyed what I've stumbled upon here. More helpful than any other fishing community catfishing has. Oh, yeah. He's a big saw guy fisherman. Oh, no, they're tight lipped. And <laughs> yeah. The, this catfishing community, especially like I mentioned earlier, the, the group from Ohio, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't believe you're 100% right. There is such a good showing for uh, – look, uh, Jim just said you guys are up to 53. Thank you. There you go. That's hey, more than double. We all started – some. you know what I mean? You start somewhere. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's right. a big deal. Uh, but, yeah, the showing for uh, support and, and catfish anglers out of Ohio is just crazy to me uh, compared to, you know, the rest of the country when it comes to – big fish and fishability. I don't know if it's because we don't have as many big fish as the rest of the country does. And so we got to fight hard for every single one. 
I, uh, I think so. I think that's got a lot to do with it. That you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, you know big tournament anglers that that have have told us all you know like look if you're consistent on the Ohio River, you got a pretty good shot at the rest of the country because it's not easy catching fish here. And I'm not saying that we're great anglers or better than anyone else because of it, but it, it's 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 not easy. It's not it's not fish out of a barrel. I can tell you that. My dog got in the court here. One second, brother. <laughs> we're going for a ride. I can tell you that uh, we love we love what you, the setup you guys got. The big uh, I don't know how many comments I saw about people saying they love your table and the, yeah and the, yeah and the and the big the country theme that you guys got going on there. It looks like a place I'd like to go hang out. <laughs> I mean, she she what? Um, her whole theme and all that rustic lodge. I mean, yeah. it's just a homey oh, feeling. I, and oh yeah, I built for the on the side. <laughs> Here you go. Somebody <laughs> said you guys were having an earthquake. <laughs> oh, I had the phone plugged in up there on the stand, and Come here. and the dog got into the cord. Uh, Kentucky Hunter wants to know where you guys fish on the Ohio River. So these guys are actually located in central Ohio. They're like smack dab in the middle of Ohio. So uh, we really haven't the last couple of years, but in the past when we have uh, Fort Smith over to Gallup list. That's, that's, that's my backyard. So, but. Uh, I, I always ask this question to anybody, especially some that I haven't met yet, but uh bucket list fishing destinations for y'all. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I have to take her to the James River and we're probably going okay. to do that this coming river or this coming winter. I years ago I showed her a video of someone catching like 800 pounds of fish in, in a day and she's been addicted since and Oh, I, mm -hmm. I saw that. Oh, oh, everyone's Cooper. Santa Cooper? Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I've never fished there. I have fished the James a few times. Uh you know, that's a good fun trip fishing a uh, fishing tidal water is a crazy experience. So, uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, it's it's neat. And, and the thing is, you know, we got two stands. Uh, you got three stands. You got uh, Austin from um, mm -hmm. Fishing Fever. You got Dan over at Green Machine. Uh, or not? He's not Green Machine anymore. He's uh, Goober Time Guides. Goober Time. There we go. Goober Time Guides. You got so many good folks over there that yep. that can get on good fish there's a the information is endless i can give you information based on what i've seen and what i've done out there but it's not going to be nearly as good as what these guys got right yeah the ones the ones that fish it that's their home waters yeah definitely yeah uh there you go harley says i love catfishing but i would head to salt water if i had my choice mm. all right well this question is has made it clear through the end of the show but uh we always want to know about PBs. Yes. We always want to know what, what kind of PBs you guys are up against. So, because it's always exciting when you break it. You know what I mean? If you know, yeah, like, absolutely it is. But somebody goes out and they're like, dude, they, they, they could smash their PB today. Uh, what are you guys looking at? My mine is a blue at 34.40. 34.40. Look at it. She knew exactly. Mm hmm. No, exactly. My PB was more than 20 years ago, and it was a flathead out of the Muskingum at 32. Yes, her PB is bigger than mine. <clears throat> mine is one of the photos I was thinking earlier. It was, it was right at 50 pounds out of the Ohio River. Nice. 50 pounds. That's, Heck yeah. That's a, that's a fan, those are all fantastic uh, yeah. uh, PBs, and, uh, you know, they could be beaten at any time. Uh, what's your yep. biggest channel cast? You guys are fishing Sandusky Bay. We all know that there's some monster channels up there. I think my biggest up there is 22 because my PD was 21 for a long time out of Rocky Fork, and I beat it with a 22 uh, at Sandusky. Mine's right around there. We're all three right around there. Uh, right my around big there. one was last Man. summer was 24. So, yeah. That's 24. So. Oh, my God. That's that – That is – we know that I, watched, uh, I watched the 31 go over the side of a boat, and, and that's just phenomenal. 31 pound channel cat. Yep. Crazy. It, it, that's yeah. so wild. That's so wild to me because only a few years ago did I even know channel cats got that big. I, I, I thought channel cats didn't get over five pounds. 
You know, that's that's because that's all they get down here. It, it's wild that they get our, that big. It's crazy. Our average the other night, when I think when we looked up, was like 14, 15 pounds per channel fed. I think it, oh, yeah, yeah, I think it was yeah. 11, 211. It was 16 fish for 173 <laughs> pounds. So, wow. That's, uh, that is that's unbelievable. That, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you guys right now are, in my opinion, are my biggest threat, at least out of the Ohio anglers, you know. I don't really – I never try to compare myself to the Tennessee, James, Mississippi anglers, um, but we – One but fish is in our whole night, yeah. Huh? We're, we're one of their fish could be our whole night, yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, well – Get like Parker 62. I, I'm not going to see that here. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, Parker caught a 62. He actually quadrupled it with the pick – with the draw four. And consistency, you guys yep. didn't catch a 60, but you caught – which, how many fish did you say you caught? 16. 16 fish. And yep. you we guys gave won. two of them away. We got three fish from them. Parker gave us a good fish for that one. And 28. The, Thanks, Parker. The, <laughs> the draw twos were really good to us. We had yep. one skip, um, one two, reverse. two reverses, and we had three fish re reversed to us. So that was kind of a wash, even though yep. we got more weight from them. But right. the numbers were kind of a wash there. So uh, that yeah. was kind of our thought going into fishing Sandusky Bay, too, is if you keep putting fish on the board, the reverse could come to you at any time. Right. Yeah. That's 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 the struggle we was having. We hadn't caught a fish. I was like, we don't have a shot at a reverse or a skip because we ain't caught a fish. Yep. <laughs> and so, yeah. So, you know, because uh, some people made the comment was like, well, this this uh, this tournament isn't about um, this tournament isn't about good angling it's about luck well no uh if you continuously put fish on the board it's going to continue to to work yep. in your favor you know i mean yep. it's if you're not catching fish if you're not if you if you're not successful catching fish your chances of winning this thing were pretty slim so i, I so love the idea what was it if that's the only way we knew we could compete with james river in tennessee and yeah no, you guys are on the right thing, man. I, I thought it was fun. It, you know, it, it's always a fun twist. And that's that's the thing, especially because this is a tournament now and there's money involved, yeah. is you don't want things to become stale and everybody's right. just eye on the prize and, and not having fun anymore. Tournaments like this and all the ones that are lined up for this year are designed to keep it fun. Uh, so the way I see it is, look, we <laughs> – we're going to fish these tournaments. We've been fishing them for years for free. Mm -hmm. And so they, they threw a, they, they threw a prize at the end uh, to make it kind of fun. If you end up in the top seat. Uh, so to me, that's like, it really is not changing a whole lot. Uh, we're going to fish them anyway, but uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season to see how it plays out. I'm really got my eye on you guys. I think you guys are going to be extremely competitive. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I think, I think you guys are off to a great start, uh, a great way to highlight you guys' channel and what you're capable of. And uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with next. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. So, Jeremy, you got anything else for us tonight? No, I'm good. I'm good. Like I said, we got, got a little spotlight we can show in a minute if, yep. uh, if we're ready for it. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll get ready to we're going to kick that off again. We'll say thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We still got 71 folks hanging out. Uh, and that's, and that's, that's just a great night for us. We appreciate everybody. We're going to close the night off with the, with the tonight's spotlight brought to you by Kelly Bullock. And thank you again, mm -hmm. brother. And uh, we will catch you next. Actually, you're going to catch Jeremy next week. You're going to yes. catch Jeremy. We, have, we, we have, we have a special show planned. I have to, talk to all of our guests about it, which I'm pretty sure they're going to be down for it, but yeah. we got an awesome show next week. Trust me. So next, next Tuesday night, I'm actually going to be heading down to Alabama. I believe we're leaving, leaving at midnight. So I've got to get mm -hmm. some sleep. And uh, so I don't know if I'll be able to sleep or not, but we're heading to Alabama uh, late Tuesday night. And so Jeremy said, Hey, I'll take the show on for the night. It. Give it to me. boss. Put, put, put me in coach. Plan. We got something special <laughs> planned. Or I got something special planned. The rest of them don't know about it yet, but that's okay. Again, thank you guys for taking the time to come on and hang out with us tonight. And uh, we'll we'll wrap things up here with the, tonight's spotlight. We'll see you guys next Tuesday night. Same cat time, same cat channel. 
Don't be Good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you all.